The brand Royal Enfield has been around since the beginning of time. Well, at least it kind of feels that way. They've been making MCs since 1901. Now, the more modernish day RE was established in India in 1955, and they've been very successful making the same type of bikes for decades. In 2018, the company is ready for the dawn of a new era with the twins. And we got one today. The Royal Enfield Interceptor 650. It's time to go beyond the ride. Interceptor 650 is powered by a four-stroke 648cc air and oil-cooled single overhead cam parallel twin engine that punches out a modest 47 horsepower at 7,250 rpm and 52Nm of torque at 5,250 rpm. Stopping power is provided by a 320mm disc up front and a 240mm disc at the rear, both with ABS. Keeping bumps at bay is a 41mm fork at the front and a twin coilover at the back. The fuel capacity is 13.7 liters. And if you're just cruising around, you can get roughly 28 kilometers per liter, which is pretty good. Of course, that changes depending on traffic conditions. I'm a sucker for classic bikes. It just seems like they have a nice story to tell and RE stayed true to its brand with the aesthetics of the Interceptor 650. I mean, it looks like it's from the 1960s with some nice upgrades. It's the only bike along with the Continental GT 650 that has a six-speed manual transmission and a slipper clutch, which is very useful. Up close, you get to appreciate the build quality of the bike. It's really solid. I mean, it is built like a gun. The attention to the detail of RE is top-notch. I love the design of the gas cap and little things like the foot pegs have a nice uh, Royal Enfield branding and it's just so well built. Or is it built well? Now, builders love to use the Interceptor and the GT Continental 650 as their base bike. That's why you see a lot of customized versions of the twins. Now, personally, the first thing I would do change these don't love them i really don't maybe the fender also shorten it side mirrors tail tidy yeah just a couple things the seat height is 804 millimeters i am five foot six and as you can see it's not an issue whatsoever now the position of the foot pegs you probably have to get used to it a little bit but they do retract so it should be pretty safe. Now the wet weight is 202 kilograms, slightly heavier than I expected it to be. But it still should be extremely manageable in city traffic. Let's do a quick sound test and fire up the twins. Saddle. The seating position is pretty neutral and comfortable. Now, we had the other RE twin, the Continental GT650, for our very first Moto Deal video. And while you're sitting on that bike, you can feel some of the weight on your wrists because it's a little bit more aggressive. On this, you don't feel any weight at all. The throttle response is pretty good. And I haven't had any issues switching gears. The bike is really, really smooth. You don't feel much vibration at all. The 
Interceptor is perfect if you just want to go for a nice chill ride. It's a bare bones bike that's very basic and fundamental. It's not going to win you a sprint against other middleweight bikes out there, but that's not what it's built for. Riding around the city with this bike is really a joy. The parallel twin feels really, really nice. The brakes could be a little stronger. I know it's a chill bike, but I still want something with a little bit more bite, especially here in the Philippines. I mean, how many times have we seen a dog run in the middle of the street, pedestrians coming out of nowhere, other pets, animals, cars, other motorcycle riders? I mean, you'd want to be able to know the confidence that you can stop the bike properly in an emergency situation. Now what's great about this bike is that it's perfect as a daily commuter to get you to and from work and to do your daily chores. And if you want to, or if you need to, you can get on the expressway here in the Philippines. Now it's important to note that there is a law in the Philippines that says anything that's below 400cc cannot get on S-Lex or N-Lex or any of the other expressways in the country. This is 650cc, you can not take this bike on the expressway and it handles it pretty well. You can ride it with confidence, it's pretty sturdy and I can, sure, I can feel the wind hitting against my chest but that's fine, it's nothing that's super uncomfortable. So obviously this is not a touring or adventure bike so expect a lot of that wind hitting your chest but it's not uncomfortable. It's not, it's bearable. Now, if you want to, you can get a windscreen for the bike, which you can buy from Royal Enfield. But personally, I prefer the look without the windscreen. Royal Enfield has big plans for these twins. In fact, they've already announced that they're gonna be coming up with a whole bunch of new bikes starting next year. And to be honest with you, as good as this bike is, this is just the beginning. I can't wait to see what they have planned next. Not gonna lie, I can see myself with this bike or maybe the Continental GT650 in the future. I mean, I honestly almost bought one, but I eventually ended up with a bigger bike because I just wanted something that had a little bit more oomph, a little bit more performance. Not saying that this doesn't, because it does. It pulls its own weight. But I just needed something a little bit bigger. But maybe in the not too distant future, if I wanna just chill on the motorcycle, this could be a great choice. So is it perfect? Well, no, but seriously, what is? It's all relative. However, if you're learning to ride a big bike or moving up from a smaller displacement, I'm not sure if there's a better option. It's got the heritage. It's relatively easy to ride. Maintenance should not be a problem. And it's great value for money at 365,000 Philippine pesos. For more information about this bike and other great deals on some other MCs, log on to www.motodeal.com.ph. This has been Gene Rufino for Beyond the Ride.